So as Tammy said, this is a tribute to David Johnson. He was the founder of uh, DIMAX uh, Challenge Series. And uh, David was, uh, was born in 1945 and died, away, uh, died about uh, six years ago in 2016. And uh, before I start, I'd like to thank two people for helping me get material for this talk. So uh, the first is uh, Kathy Magoo, who's one of the organizers of this conference. And here's a photo of Kathy at a, a WIA conference in Angra dos Reis in Brazil back in 2004. And the second person was is Luciana Burial, who was a PhD student at David's department uh, and uh, who sat across the hall from David. And so uh, thank both of these people. So why am I giving this talk, you might ask. And uh, well, I think the best answer I can come up with is that David was my manager at the labs for uh, 25 years. So I was hired uh, in 1988 uh, at ATT Bell Labs into David's department and, uh, and then continued with David uh, when we transitioned to ATT Labs and uh, worked with him until his retirement in 2013. And, and at both locations, uh, uh, the, uh, my office and his were uh, right next door to each other. So it was very easy to uh, uh, walk into his, uh, his office and very easy for him to walk into my office. So over those 25 years, I got to know David uh, quite well and, uh, and, and to admire him. <clears throat> so here's a photo back in 1995 of the folks of the Mathematical Sciences Research Center and the Computing Sciences Research Center. And can anyone find David here? It took me a little while, but uh, here he is. Uh, and so David uh, uh, had a, a partner in writing, uh, uh, which was uh, uh, Mike Gary. And, uh, and uh, here I am. Uh, so how do I fit into this picture? Well, uh, David hired me as a member of technical staff. Uh, when he was just promoted to head of the Mathematical Sciences Research Center, uh, the head of the Mathematical Foundations of Computing Department, sorry, uh, which was previously head, headed by Mike Gary. Uh, and Mike had just been promoted to director of the Mathematical Sciences Research Center. And so that's how our, our this, was, this was in 1988. And that's how I got, uh, I started uh, <clears throat> getting to know uh, David. So David had many research interests, uh, mainly around the issues of uh, computational complexity and uh, analysis of algorithms. And uh, he focused on all types of analysis. So worst case analysis, uh, probabilistic experimental analysis, uh, approximation algorithms. And then there were some problems that he really loved. So bin packing, uh, which dated back to his PhD, uh, TSP, and then more recently, network design and graph partitioning and coloring. So as I said, these are photos from the 19, 1970s. And, uh, uh, and this is a photo of David with Mike Gary and Bob Tarjan. Uh, David was born in 1945, as I said, and he went to do his undergraduate at uh, uh, Amherst College uh, in mathematics. Uh, and another coincidence is that in 19, in, during the time that he was an undergraduate student in Amherst, I actually lived in Amherst also. Uh, my dad was doing his PhD at UMass at that time, but I, I never got to meet David there. Uh, uh, but uh, then uh, after, the, after his undergraduate, he went to MIT where he got a master's in mathematics and then a PhD. And his, the title of his thesis was near optimal bin packing problems, uh, bin, bin packing algorithms. So that already captured a lot of his uh, research interests just in this title. So uh, following his PhD, he joins uh, Bell Labs. 
And within uh, five or six years or so, they publish, he publishes with Mike Gary, uh, his uh, uh, famous book, Computers and Intractability, uh, <clears throat> Guide to the Theory of MP Completeness. And this book has, ha has had a major impact. Uh, to date, it has over 72,000 citations on Google Scholar. Uh, they went on to win the Lancaster Prize of Warsa, which is currently informs, uh, for the best publication in OR for the, in the last five years. Um, and when David uh, published uh, his, his book, he, he, he already had in mind that he wanted to do a follow-up, like a second edition, because it's a very dynamic field and people are discovering more and more NP complete problems. Uh, but he never got around to that. But he did start writing uh, uh, the on guide, the ongoing guide on NP completeness, which he published uh, in journals. Uh, so in 1988, he became head of the Mathematical Foundations of Computing Department, Bell Labs. Uh, in 1990, he founded SOTA, uh, for which he was committee chair for 25 years and uh, the DIMAX implementation challenges, and this is why we're here today. Uh, he was awarded uh, Bell Labs uh, Affirmative Action uh, Award. Uh, he became a fellow of the ACM for fundamental contributions to the theories of approximation algorithms and computational complexity. Uh, in 1996, he became head of the Algorithms and Optimization Research Department at Bell Labs at at and Lab, sorry, uh, and he was named an at and Fellow in 2005. In 2007, he won a, a prize for research excellence in the interface between OR and CS, again on the bin, bin packing paper, but experimental uh, paper. In 2009, David was, uh, was elected SIAM Fellow. Uh, and here's a photo of David in uh, at the WEA, this by the way was the last uh, SIA that was called WEA, so we changed the name from workshop on experimental algorithms to, to symposium. Uh, and, and this is in uh, Provincetown. This, is a, this was a, a WEA organized by Kathy Magoo. Okay, then 2010, uh, David uh, wins the Donald Knuff Prize for, again, for contributions to theoretical and experimental analysis of algorithms. And here's a photo of David and Mike with uh, Knuth, with Donald Knuth in 1975. Uh, in 2013, David uh, retired from at and Labs uh, and, and joined Columbia University as a visiting professor. So David was not very happy to retire. Uh, he really loved the job and the people there, and uh, and, and he was quite sad to, to leave. Um, just a, a couple, one or two months before uh, passing away, David was elected to the National Academy of Engineering for contributions to the theory and practice of optimization and approximation algorithms. And he died in uh, March of 2016. Now we had been working on a paper with David for several years. Uh, with a large group of people uh, at uh, at at and Labs. Uh, and uh, before David uh, went to have uh, uh, surgery, uh, he sent me an email uh, sending me all the files uh, of this related to the experiments and paper of this uh, uh, of, of this research uh, for safekeeping, just in case some, something happened. And, uh, and, and that was good that he did that because uh, then I was able to take over and finally got this, push this paper through and we published it in operations research uh, dedicated to David's memory and, uh, and um, made David the first author in the paper. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about uh, DIMAX. So David uh, uh, created the DIMAX implementation challenges, uh, in his words, to address questions of determining realistic algorithm performance where worst case analysis is over, overly pessimistic and probabilistic models are too unrealistic. 
And so uh, experimentation can provide guides to realistic algorithm performance where analysis fails. And uh, so he invited uh, Kathy Magoo to, to, to take a sabbatical leave at DIMAX and help him uh, run the first DIMAX challenge. And that was a network flows and matching. And uh, at that time I was doing some research in interior point algorithms for, for network flows. And David convinced me to uh, not only participate in the challenge, but also publish my paper in the volume instead of submitting it to a, to a journal. So my paper appears in this, uh, in this, in this first, uh, first DIMAX challenge uh, volume. So there are, uh, this is the 12th DIMAX challenge. So there, there, were, there were 11 before us. Uh, so the first was, of course, network flows and matching. Uh, then there was one on max click graph coloring and satisfiability. Uh, one on parallel algorithms for combinatorial problems. Uh, one on computational biology. Uh, one on priority queues, dictionaries, and multidimensional point sets. Uh, near neighbor surges. Uh, semi-definite related optimization problems. Uh, TSP, uh, this one was, was run by David. Uh, shortest path problem, uh, graph partitioning and graph clustering. Uh, and the last one before the current was uh, on Steiner tree problems. And so finally, uh, here we are with the 12th uh, implementation challenge. Uh, vehicle routing, pro routing problems. So in 2002, David published an influential paper on experimental analysis of, of algorithms. Uh, and he published this in the, in the, in this book that was, that, that came out uh, related to the fifth and sixth DIMAX implementation challenges. Uh, and this is an expanded version of a seven page 1996 draft. Uh, and, and this is on uh, uh, titled The Theoretician's Guide to the Experimental Analysis of Algorithms. And it uh, should be required reading material for anyone doing research in this field. So uh, the idea is that theoretical results don't tell the full story about real world algorithmic performance. And uh, ex then experimentation then provides a pathway from theory into practice. And uh, since there were a lot of uh, new forms for presenting results, people were encouraged to write papers on, on this type of research. Uh, the problem is that uh, the field of experimental uh, analysis, uh, in his words, were is fraught with uh, pitfalls. Uh, and, and he wanted to make this into a serious uh, area of research, sort of like it is in, uh, like in medicine and physics. Uh, and so, so he said that the implementation of an algorithm is the easy part. The hard part is successfully using that implementation to produce meaningful and valuable and publishable research results. So, uh, he points out to four different types of experimental papers, uh, an application uh, application paper that simply describes the impact of an algorithm in an application. Uh, a horse race paper provides evidence of the superiority of algorithmic ideas. Uh, experimental analysis paper uh, uh, helps you better understand the strengths with weaknesses and operation uh, of interesting algorithmic ideas in practice, and an experimental average case paper to generate conjectures about uh, average case behavior of algorithms under specific instance distributions where direct probabilistic analysis is just too hard. So David wrote papers on all these types of, uh, of, uh, uh, of classes. And uh, I think perhaps the most important uh, uh, observation made in, in, David's, uh, in David's paper are his 10 basic principles for writing uh, experimental papers. And, and the first being to perform newsworthy experiments. Okay, so don't, don't do research about something that's very simple or very obvious. Uh, 
tie your paper to the literature. Show where it, where it fits then, and what type, what gaps it's trying to to uh, to fill. Uh, use instance test beds that can support general conclusions. Uh, use effective, efficient, and effective experimental designs. Use reasonably efficient implementations. Uh, if you do an experiment with a naive implementation, it might not tell you very, very much. Uh, very important to ensure reproducibility. And this is something that David always talked to me about that when we write papers, people often uh, report running times. But running times, you know, as computers get faster and things change, uh, it's very hard to re reproduce. And so David said it is often better to report something that was reproducible, for example, number of iterations or number of calls to an oracle. Uh, ensure comparability. Uh, and then report the full story. Don't hide anything just to make your paper look, look better. And, and, and then uh, actually draw information out of your out of your your research so draw well justified conclusions and look for explanations so david was always looking for explanations to things he observed in this in these practical problems uh, then finally present your data in informative ways uh, david always said that you know it's not a good idea just to show these these massive tables but uh, always have some graphical way of representing the, the data to go along with the tables. It's good to have the tables, but, but uh, uh, graphical representation uh, is even better. So uh, over these 25 years, uh, what did I learn from, from David? Well, these are things he told me you know, over the years. Uh, many of them uh, I learned by uh, just observing uh, uh, what, what, what he felt when he said. So one thing that he said to me is that when you're a PhD student, you should try to hit one or more home runs. And it's gonna be very important then for you to get a, a good job and at a good, at a good uh, either research center or university. And it was often the case that people who interviewed in David's department uh, wouldn't even, wouldn't talk about their PhD research, uh, their PhD thesis research, but rather some other research that they did during uh, their PhD. And so for me, it was the case. Uh, my, my, my PhD research was on scheduling of semiconductor manufacturing, uh, but uh, the work that I presented when I joined at t was on my work with interpoint point algorithms. Uh, uh, another, another thing he, he mentioned to me uh, right in the beginning when I joined, is that he's told me attend as many conferences as possible in the first 10 years after your PhD. And by the way, David never missed a single stock, uh, which is a conference, which is the annual ACM theory and uh, symposium and theory of computing conference. Uh, and so, yeah, so he said that it was important for you to get your face out and your name out and people could associate your face to, to your name. Uh, so that, that was important. Uh, when you're doing implementation, of course, you should try to implement everything as well as possible. If you're doing local search, a local search is very important because it's applied over and over in an algorithm. And so David was very good at implementing local search algorithms. I learned a lot from him uh, in, in, this, in, this, in this area. Uh, think through your computational experiments. So basically, follow the guides that his ten principles. Uh, and very important, one of the principles was do things in a reproducible way, uh, and then work hard and go the extra mile to perfect your work. So David was really a perfectionist. Like this paper, we started in 2008 and only published in 2020, uh, and and in part. Uh, uh, David who always wanted to redo the experiments and write the, the chapter, uh, write the sections in a better, uh, more clear way, and, and so on. And so that, that was 
one of his uh, main characteristics. And finally, be humble. David was a very, uh, was, was someone who had lots of uh, prizes and uh, was very well known, had a super H index, and, uh, but he was extremely humble. So that was one of his great characteristics. So a few words to finish about the person, David Johnson. Uh, so David served in the US Army from 1969 to 1971. And that was during the Vietnam War, but he was not in Vietnam. He was in, he was in Korea uh, where he was a first Lieutenant. And um, he didn't talk much about uh, his army times because he said he, he was on a, on a top secret mission and, uh, and he was sworn to secrecy the rest of his life. So we never learned exactly what, what, it, what he was doing there. Uh, but it's, uh, I think it was something related to, to radio communications, but uh, that's just a guess. Uh, now David was a runner and he, he, he ran until maybe three years before he died. Uh, uh, and here's a photo of him running in the Boston Marathon in 1975. Uh, and this is, this is an actual cover of the Red Runner's World magazine. And Dave is right, right in the middle. Uh, so he was married to Dorothy Wilson and uh, Jack Johnson uh, is their son. And uh, they lived in Madison, New Jersey for over 25 years, uh, close to both Bell Labs and AT&T Labs. And, and, and so when we moved to AT&T Labs, we wanted to find a, a location that was close to Bell Labs and David's house was right, right in the middle of both of them. So that was nice. And then when possible, David would bike to work because you know, he's, he's, he was only three miles away. Um, the whole, when he drove to work, though, David would always park in the same spot. And that's something I learned from him also. It's very handy so you don't forget where, where, where you parked, right? Uh, and, uh, and David also loved to have lunch with his colleagues in what he called the theory lunch table. Uh, where everyone who had interest in theoretical computer science would have, uh, would have, would have lunch. And so every day uh, at exactly noon, he would go by each office in our corridor and say lunch. And, and during lunch, he would always eat the same, the same dish. It was always a salad with a dressing on the side and a Coke. And that for 25 years, that, that's the only thing I saw him eat it when, when he was at work. Uh, he didn't like the stinky cheese that uh, David Applegate often brought to share with the folks at the, at the theory, at the theory lunch, lunch table. Uh, and, and then at 1, at 1 p.m., everyone would take the cue from David and get up and go back to work. Uh, <clears throat> that was like clockwork. So we'd, we'd go there at noon and at 1, everyone gets up and, and leaves. And, uh, <clears throat> and then finally, every day at 4 p.m., David would have his second Coke because he didn't drink coffee. So that was his uh, indulged in these two Cokes, one for lunch, one at four. So David loved theory lunch so much that even when he was on vacation, he would bike into Shannon lab just to have lunch uh, with, the, with, with, with the folks there. Uh, and and when, he, when he told he told me after he was ill that, that uh, at least he was, he was healthy enough to attend my retirement dinner in, uh, in November of 2014. And this was the last time that, uh, that we saw each other in person. Uh, we kept exchanging emails until uh, February of 2016, which was a month before he passed away. Uh, and I, when I congratulated him for his election to the National Academy of Engineering. Uh, and he replied saying that he got many emails about the uh, NAE and, and also a uh, C sub-referee request from Petra Mutzel for a bad TSP paper that I couldn't resist. So he, at, still a month before passing away, he was doing some refereeing work on TSP. Uh, and I couldn't uh, finish without mentioning the, the picnics that David organized. So David and, 
Dorothy had uh, an annual uh, Johnson Johnson Wilson. This is the Amber report. I'm Amber Alert. Um, uh, and so here's an email that I got in 1970 in 1993, announcing the 11th annual uh, Johnson Wilson. So, uh, so you're invited to the 11th annual. Uh, Johnson Wilson picnic for friends, summer students, mentors, visitors, family, that all. And he gave the address and the location. And he said that they would provide uh, some food, some drinks. You could bring your own drink if it wasn't in the list. And this was back in 1973, uh, not 1993, sorry. Um, and, and in 2010, I got a similar, uh, so we, every year we get these invitations and these are great picnics because everyone would come together uh, uh, and chat and 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 spend a, a nice uh, early evening together. Uh, but there was a there was an asterisk in his uh, in this email, and uh, and uh, and that asterisk said, "Note that this is likely to be the last of these affairs we will host next year. Dorothy and I will be old enough to qualify for Medicare, and it's time to pass the torch to." Uh, younger and more energetic hands. Uh, and indeed, there was no picnic in 2011, but they couldn't resist. And then in, 20, in 2012, the, the picnic series uh, restarted and, and there were uh, two, two more, 2012 and 2013. So I'm going to end with a, with a slide, with, which was uh, David's last slide in his uh, uh, Knuth Prize lecture. And, uh, and the last slide uh, had last wishes. Uh, and, and so uh, he wanted to see more examples of impact, uh, suggestions for future Kanalakas Prize nominees, and most, most important for us, suggestions for new problem domains for future DIMAX implementation challenges. And, and so here we are at the 12th uh, DIMAX implementation challenge on VRP. So here's a, uh, so David had a very nice uh, website that had lots of information, but when he passed away, when he left at and he moved it to another domain, to, to another host. And then when he passed away, uh, it wasn't the, the that, that, uh, that that domain wasn't wasn't renewed. And then the, I thought that he has, had just lost access to his, uh, to his stuff, but uh, going using the Internet Archive, I managed to find uh, hundreds of snapshots of his uh, of his pages. And here's one of uh, April 2013, uh, which will take you to uh, to this page here. And then, and this you have all this information, you know, resume, publication list, and completeness columns, uh, other papers, uh, getting data, picture wall, uh, diamond input. DIMAX implementation challenges to the TSP. And so uh, thanks very much for taking some time off to listen to this tribute. And uh, I'm very happy to be able to have presented uh, a little bit of uh, David Johnson to you, to you all. <laughs>